Hi. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a visual guide to State in React or React Native so that you can learn how to use State in your web or mobile applications. React is a JavaScript library used to create beautiful user interfaces. React Native takes the best parts of React and applies them to mobile development. Both were designed by Facebook, React in 2013, and React Native in 2015. One of the core concepts used in both React and React Native is State. When first using these frameworks, understanding the concept of state can seem confusing or overwhelming. In this video, I aim to break this down for you visually. So what is state? Let's start with the problem that we're trying to solve when we use state. Imagine you're building a component that displays a button. We want to display to the user how many times the button has been pressed. To do this, we need a way to keep track of the count of button presses. For this, we may store the button press count in a piece of state. In more technical terms, in React and React Native, state refers to an object that contains or holds information about a component that we decide we need to keep track of within our application. In the object, we define key value pairs, and these key value pairs are how we track a single piece of data that over time is going to change. So for the button presses, we may have a key button press count and a value initially of zero. When the user presses the button, the state value of button press count will change to one. Before we look at some code, let's make sure we have a very visual and clear understanding of what state is. Let's imagine we're in a jungle and we want to keep track of something that's going to change within the jungle. Maybe this is whether or not there is an elephant in sight. To achieve this, we could have an elephant visible state which could use a boolean and could be true or false. Perhaps we want to keep track of whether it is raining in the jungle. For this, we could have a piece of state called is raining, and this could be true or false. Maybe we want to count the number of parrots that we can see. We would use number of parrots, and this could be one or it could be two. So what's the benefit of using state? Well, the benefit of state within React or React Native is that it means things can change. They can be added, modified, or removed. As the developer, we can work with this more easily and update our internal data and trigger UI updates based on these changes. When you are using state, there is one key point to be aware of. When the data in our component changes, the component will re-render. So to emphasize this point, when a component first renders on the screen to a user, we have what is called an initial render. If we're using state and some of this state changes, then the component will re-render itself. In our jungle example, if we had a component called jungle, when the jungle component first renders on the screen, it loads. We have an is raining state, and this is set to false. Later, when it starts to rain, the is raining state becomes true. Consequently, the jungle component then re-renders. In the world of coding, this sort of change might be more likely to occur based on a user event such as a button press, or perhaps some sort of user input, such as typing something into an input field. Let's explore the button press example I discussed at the start of the article. I'm going to show you this in React, but it would be equally similar in React Native, apart from just some simple syntax changes. So in the example, we start by importing React, and we also use useState from React. So we declare inside of an array the name for the state, and this is followed by an updater function. This is then initialized with the value of zero. For the text, we display the current count for how many times the button has been pressed, and we pass in the value of button press count state. In the button, we use an onclick handler to update the state every time the button is pressed. To do this, we use the update function set button press count and we pass in the current state value button press count. We increment it by one.
This means that once the button is pressed, the component will re-render and the button press count is incremented by one. So to wrap up this video, let's look at what we have learned. We have learned that state is an object to keep track of the data about a component. By using state, we can add, remove, or modify things in our component more easily. And then we can trigger UI updates based on these changes. When the state changes, it causes the component to re-render. To be very clear, there is a distinct difference between state and props, another core React concept. Props let us pass in data between components, whereas state lets us internally manage the data within a component. You can't therefore modify the state of a component outside of the component. The benefit of working with React or React Native is that a lot of the hard work is done for you. You just have to provide the initial values and then consider how you would like this value to update and then to be displayed to the user. If and when your state grows and you need this to be at an application level, then you can also access libraries to help you manage this, such as Redux. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe for more content.